say about Puerto Rico? It's a great place to come if you have never been to a Spanish-speaking place. It's also a great place to go if you've traveled pretty much everywhere else in the United States. Uh, I mean, including Hawaii. I'd say if you compare this to going to Hawaii, it's probably a better value. Because the vibe here is very identical, if not a little better. But at the same time, very different. Uh, Puerto Rico is great in regards to going to the beach. You know, there's a lot of places to see here, you know, but uh, not that many mountains to climb, but there's a handful that are quite scenic, like uh, El Yunque, which is, you know, east side of Puerto Rico, maybe about 45 minute drive from San Juan, right? Uh, very pretty. You're gonna like it here if uh, you want to be familiar. You want to see a very similar environment that you see in the U.S. Like same cars, same stores, identical roads, you know, signs. Um, and if you're from any state that has a whole bunch of Spanish-speaking people, uh, you're gonna feel right at home here because this here feels just like being in South Florida. What are the things that you don't like? Some of the things that I don't like, personally, is that, you know, some of the drivers, you know, the driving here is kind of similar to drivers in South Florida, but it's a bit more chaotic here in regards to people not using turn signals, you know, cutting each other off. But the odd thing is that unlike in Florida, where if you do that, people would lose their Temper. minds they don't really do that here if people do it they're so used to it they just kind of you know give way give way yeah so and of course the biggest thing is it's not cheap to come here you know if you're nothing's really cheap any, cheap anymore in the u.s but um Puerto Rico is definitely no exception. You know, if you're in San Juan, uh, you know, you're gonna get a meal. You're gonna be getting, you're gonna be spending about 50 to 20 bucks per person for a reasonable meal. You know, not like a small little kiosk or a shop, but actual restaurant. Yeah, 15, 20 bucks or more. And with, you know, there's a tipping culture here, people expect tips. And, you know, the sales tax here is rather high. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a little pricey. And um, if you want to go around the island, of course you can. And of course you can stay on the highway the whole, all the way around. But, you know, if you're going to be renting a car or you have your own car, it's all toll roads. So while you'd be getting through everything really quickly, you got to pay toll. So I think, I think, I'm assuming this part, because I have not added it up, but maybe we'll spend 20, 30, 40 bucks, maybe go to go around the island through all the tolls. Could be wrong here, but. Um, when you go to, to your car rental place, you can prepay it and uh, you're going to be able to have like an all-inclusive toll, uh, tolls paid, which I think I might have paid 10 bucks a day or something. So I might have paid 40, 50 bucks for about four days, uh, you know, to pay for all the tolls. So anyway. Would you recommend to uh, do Uber or rent a car to explore the whole island? The it depends on what you want to do. If you want to go places here. If you're here for a couple days and all you want to do is explore and you don't have a driver's license, you're kind of limited because, you know, renting an Uber, it's not that much cheaper than it is in the U.S. Granted, though, you could, of course, you know, sign up for like a tour package where you pay some money up front, but they're going to take you through all the cool places on their own vehicles. Uh, but if you have a license and you want to drive around the island and you know, check out places that's the best bet um gas is identical cost you know, price wise as in the u.s you know mainland and you know you can you gotta cover the whole island in one day you know, from morning till probably late afternoon if you just keep driving of course but of course i recommend you stop by multiple places along the way and you could probably cover the whole island in about two days three days if you kind of take your time what are the uh, 
rental company that they, they have in Puerto Rico. They have All, Avis. They I mean have everything from Hertz to Enterprise to Avis to National to Budget, Sixth. Um, so since we rented on Sixth, what and how much did you pay for four days? Uh, well, this is where I recommend you book ahead of time, but we paid like 430 bucks for four days for a small car. But that included insurance, Toll. all the toll fees, and the car rental. So the car rental would have been around probably 40 bucks a day. And then you got an extra 60, 60 bucks a day to pay for the remaining items, like insurance and 40 bucks, for, yeah, so it's 40 bucks for the insurance, insurance yeah. per day and then it's $44 insurance yeah, per day. Yeah, and then the remaining 20 bucks or so for, I think, tolls, something like that. So, book ahead of time. There's also non-big chain car rental places, which I was looking at, but I didn't book ahead, you know, ahead of time. But one of them I hear is Target, it's called Target Rental Car, or Target Car Rentals. They're out of San Juan and they're actually all over the place and you can get better rates there um, in fact I got one person quoted me 230 bucks 240 bucks for you know tolls and a car fee that might have included insurance I'm not sure about 230 240 bucks it's almost 200 dollars difference so, so what car did we rent it's a Kia we rented a Kia Rio small compact fiery red color you know car as basic as you can really get decent car to get around the island but you could also rent like something bigger, like a truck or a SUV, which would probably cost you an extra maybe 15, 20, 30 bucks a day. But that might be a better idea since there's a lot of potholes and, you know, bumpy roads as you go around. Scary drivers. Yeah, so it's going to be more comfortable.